let's get started, shall we? Uh, we'll start it, I guess, right now. All right, turn off everything. All right, let's get started. Hey guys, uh, doing a quick video guide, one take. Apologize for no production value. I'm gonna do a rare yellow map, tier 10. I'm gonna do a tier 12, just to show you guys what it looks like in maps. As always, um, shouldn't really commit to a guide or listen to a video, unless it suits your playstyle and you like the way that it looks, okay? So here's the shape dunes. And I'll even show you guys the bad boss clearing. Build is an auto bomber using a cost breeze, change some stuff up. Uh, most of the videos you'll see are using an Aberas or some kind of walking build. I didn't like that playstyle very much just because if you're going to choose to do a very small subset of content, you should be able to do it well, right? And this build, overall, it's, it's okay. It struggles on bosses. Right now I have some pretty nice gear. I'll show you that afterwards. And we'll go over like the, the starter stuff as well. Oh man, look at all these returns. Thanks, Bisco. So I'll just clear this. You know what? Maybe I won't even pick up anything. Just so you guys can see like full try hard mode. Okay, once again, it's only a T. Um, it's only a yellow, but. And then I pop my Vol Breach. We'll talk about Vol Breach a lot in a second. Here's the boss. I hope he doesn't res. Oh, he's definitely going to res. Yeah, he rezzed. Ugh. What if I die to this boss during the guide video? That'd be embarrassing, right? And he's gonna get cold right now. Okay, so that's Vol Breach. Single target is meh. A little bit iffy. Oh, returns! Okay. And we'll finish the rest of this. Really nice because if you are someone who likes to just hold down one button and really not press that many things. Oh god, I forgot that I sexed in the physical mobs here. Uh, you can basically just hold down shield charge and do the entire build. Lightning Golem's dead. Man, making so much monies. And what is it? More than 50? Okay, 40 monsters remaining. That's it for that map. And um, if you don't mind holding your questions till the end. We'll do a red map real quick just so you guys can uh, get your lulls ready at me dying to a vulnerability boss. But I believe in presenting... A totally honest view of builds so wind up is a little bit weird because you need seven power charges before the build even works uh, assassin nerfs made it so that now it's no longer base crit with power charge it's now two percent base at full charges so it's a little clunky you can try using jaws of agony I don't recommend it because that's not very fun um, not so bad to just go through a couple packs and uh, and get your power charges. Uh, another nice thing is that if you get frozen on this build, you're kind of safe. As long as you have Herald of Thunder chaining, it's a 6 second chain. And it'll protect you against bosses, it'll protect you against getting stunned. I'm taking Brian King right now, I think, uh, just for the extra... Uh, stun immunity. Sometimes I do need to like cast my lightning golem and stuff, so um, there's that. More than 50 monsters. Wow, I didn't clear this very well. Almost missed a chaos orb, too. Alright, almost done with this map. We'll leave the garbinger over there, and I'll go back to town. Explain mechanics. So here's how the build works. Uh, the main damage dealers are going to be your Herald of Ice and Herald of Thunder. Uh, what happens is the second you kill a shocked mob, your Herald of Thunder goes off. Uh, the Herald of Thunder, it cannot shock, uh, but it can freeze. And nowadays, with new ailment changes, freeze, shock is just so easy to apply on literally everything. Uh, I've tested out maps where when I have Ash's Mirror stacks, we'll talk about that item later as well, I've swung my Cospreys at an enemy, and it's gotten chilled and shocked. So that's how easy it is to apply, so it makes that really nice. So it's a rolling six second buff on Herald of Thunder all the time because once it shatters, Herald of Ice goes off. And Herald of Ice has lightning damage on it from Ash's Mirror as well. Sometimes you can even put in added lightning and Herald of Ice will then um, chain to the outer mobs for more AoE and then that will trigger Herald of Thunder again, which will then trigger Herald of Ice again, which will then trigger, uh, what's it called? Uh, Herald of... Thunder, Herald of Ice, you guys get the gist now, okay? Uh, added to this 
that makes it really nice is this shield. So this shield is uh, completely broken right now if you have a speed clearing build. So this isn't added damage to spells, it's not added damage to attacks, it's added base damage. And when you have stuff like this, that's at 1.2, you're basically at like 1.2 to 12 lightning damage recently per mob. And you can you can like take a look at the, uh, the previous two maps and you almost always have, I'd say probably like 40, 50 stacks up. And that is just an extreme amount of damages. Also now in the life mana, you have life, you have one high resist. Uh, pretty decent life too, so uh, amazing shield. Highly re recommend for like a lot of other builds as well. Other than that, it adds massive flat damages. You want to get enough uh, to reliably shatter with Herald of Thunder, and which isn't a problem because what happens is if you remember old auto bombers, they were using two four links, and this is a pseudo six link with the Tempest Binding Callus Mask, which means that the Herald that you choose to socket into here. Uh, we'll get the benefit of uh, Ice Bite and Innervate. So added cold, added lightning, basically. Really nice. Um, in here, this chest, it's new this league. Same with the helm. Uh, kind of makes the the build, it takes it to the next level, I'd say. So the chest adds flat, uh, kind of like a flat more multiplier with the plus two level of gems because you cannot get um, spell damage on this, right? Heralds do not count as spells, so you can't get Doomcast, you can't get Annihilation right here, you can't get any spell damage, you can't... It's really hard to scale, it's basically Elemental, Cold, Lightning, all that good stuff. Um, so by scaling the base level, uh, it's really nice. Herald Device, I am using on a Hypothermia because of how easy it is to chill, so that's one of the very few more multipliers you get here. Cold Penetration, this is, um, this is also kind of like a pseudo more multiplier uh, well it is it is a more multiplier it just has more benefit if the mob has a non-zero amount of cold resist right increased crit so heralds do not have any base crit uh, if you look right here i'll just show you real quick my base crit here is eight when usually you can look at spells and you'll have like 30 40 crit so really low that's why you need assassin to add like two base crit when you're at full power charges uh, same with this, 8.04, really bad. But you have to have this gem, it's uh, non-negotiable there. Others in power is just because I, I want to take the base damage of this as high as possible, and in power, once I get a plus one chest, it will take this to be a 28 Herald, which will be nasty. Ink AoE, just for map clearing, right? You want to juice out every little bit of AoE you can. That's why I'm taking uh, up here Ink AoE as well. Ink AoE, it uh, makes the Herald of Thunder range seeking bigger, okay? It doesn't like do anything for the bolt that comes down, but it does allow you to uh, get an extra centimeter of uh, diameter about. So what I did is I tested an Elrion. I went to Elrion kill 50 missions. I stood on top of the shrine and that circle that spawns, I kept taking out this and putting it back in and you get about a centimeter um, on your your diameter not too not too great right but sometimes it could help so because once you have enough damage you know who cares if, if a mob has a hundred health if you do a hundred damage or a thousand so after a certain level of damages and gear you only want aoe and speed uh, next biscos if you're doing a map clearing build biscos is mandatory it's uh, almost doubling your clear speed the rings, uh, you can start with diamonds. I started with diamonds until level 85, 90, and then I switched to opals once I could afford it, uh, because once again, it's hard to scale the herald damage directly. Diamonds, uh, after a diamond flask, they weren't as applicable for me at least, so I switched to opals. Uh, I will initially, I will probably want lightning damage on these. I feel like my cold damage with this more multiplier on hypothermia is enough, so I wanna go for opals with uh, Hopefully a tier 1 lightning roll, which I think is 26, but I can't afford it right now. Life roll, get 2 resists if you can. Gloves, uh, you are... Yeah, we'll talk about leveling in a second. Um, gloves, you have to have insanity gloves if you're map clearing. If you don't have insanity gloves, you can't afford them. You can use things like southbound if you like. You can also use um, any other gloves to shore up your resistances and your life. You don't need a headhunter. This I got yesterday from Chancing after like 900 belts, but I was using a heavy belt until level 92. And so just shore up your resistances, um, get some life on your belt, maybe some reduction in flash charges, maybe some flash charges duration, it's totally fine. Boots, I was wearing Death's Door for a while and I switched off of it because the 
the ailments on me lasted a little bit too long. I didn't like that. Also, I wanted 30% move speed here to shield charge faster um, right here. And then also I needed a lot of resists. Um, once I put on a headhunter, once I put on like a Biscos, these don't have resists, right? So I had to shore it up somewhere else. And even now I am barely, once I pop Dying Sun and Vinktars, I am just capped. Well, I'm 1% above for cold res on yellow maps. I'm not res capped on cold for LE weakness maps on red maps. And that's kind of an issue, which I'll fix later by getting a better ring uh, right here. This ring's kind of like garbage. Anyways, so just rare boots, 30% uh, movement speed is most important. And let's talk about the Cospreys. Okay, so what I noticed, I was using a Bright Beak at first. I also tested out Doriani's earlier for a little bit, didn't like that. Um, what you find with a Doriani's and a Bright Beak is there's cleanup. Uh, so when you get some pretty nasty rolled maps, your heralds will still go off, but the stuff around you in this radius right here you're going to have some stragglers and stragglers when you're trying to map clear feel they're they're just the worst they make you they make your build feel really bad so if you're able to do something about the stragglers inside the small radius which vortex does really well and it chills for hypothermia to go into effect um, then you feel pretty good because then once the stragglers around your immediate vicinity are taken care of your herald of thunder no longer has to range find um around your character right it can go to the outer limits of the aoe and so since it can only target every quarter second, you don't want it like shooting mobs right here, right? Because then your AOE is a Herald that's like here. You want it to, you want your Herald of Thunder to shoot out to the farthest away mobs that you can, right? For that real juicy AOE. Next thing, um, that's why like Esh's Mirror once again is so good. Esh's Mirror will make any build into a shield charge build. Doesn't matter that I have 900 um, average damage here. I'll get up to like 5k, sometimes 10k with Esh's Mirror and everything popped. And so that makes shield charge able to clear in the immediate vicinity as well. So that's just one little, like, little tiny thing. You don't have to do this. Try to bright beak. Try to try out a, a Adzubi's mace, whatever it's called. Maybe get two of them. I didn't like it for the speed clear. Other than that, let's talk about flask diamond of grounding because you're going to use a Vinktars uh, to leech back. And then this also squares your chance not to crit. So very high effective crit here. The Alchemist uh, Sulfur Flask, this is uh, debatable as well because you can use anything else in here. Wise Oak if you can get the resist for it. Uh, this is just to add a little bit extra damage and to stop bleed. Bleed in 3.0 to me feels extremely painful. It's way worse than freeze for this build, so I opted to go with this. This one, uh, pretty mandatory for uh, mandatory for speed clearing maps, right? It's just a Quicksilver of Adrenaline, uh, Alchemist, so you get a little bit extra boost. This is a Dying Sun. This is completely unnecessary. Uh, this one, forgot the chest links on purpose. No, I talked about them earlier. Uh, Dying Sun is only to squeeze out a little bit of AoE. With the changes to AoE, especially, well, I should say the nerfs to AoE, every percentage you get past the next is ultimately worse so this is just so that my herald of thunder can shoot mobs a tiny bit farther away it's so that my herald of ice can clear a little bit better it can uh, chain a tiny bit further away absolutely not need i recommend putting in anything else that has freeze immunity because you want to take care of um, bleed and freeze which i haven't but i don't care about freeze immunity because i have um herald of thunder will take will protect me right in the freeze situations and i have brian king as well as the pantheon power so that's a dying sun and then um last one is a uh, vinktar so self-explanatory penetration for lightning is the best one uh, once again it's not a spell so you can't do added for either of the heralds and uh, just to leech it back i have vault packed on the tree Another thing, so did I go over all the links? Oh, Immortal Call Setup. So this is pretty standard in most builds these days. I have a cast one damage taken, a level 3 Immortal Call, and a level 5 Warlord's Mark uh, for to make it under level 38 required. This uh, helps a lot. When you get hit, it'll immediately go off. Now that the... I think they upped the radius a tiny bit, right? For the base, so it's reliable to um, get some endurance charges, protect you a little bit, maybe save your life in some vault packed situations. This uh, gem right here, okay, let's talk about this. So with this is why I don't recommend this build because there's no single target to speak of. The build is complete trash uh, on essence mobs, on 
beyond mobs on map bosses before I got this. It was just, there was literally no single target. So I was like thinking, what should I do? I can go a six link pledge of hands swap and I'd have to turn off a herald for that. You could do that, but that's not an elegant solution, right? You don't want to have to weapon swap or like swap in gems to do content, especially if you do such a small subset of content anyways. So this, this uh, synergizes a few ways and yes, you have to do it. Get 20% quality or else it's super slow. You'll get stunned out of it. Vault Breach allows uh, a bajillion mobs to spawn in. Once again, each one of those Vault Breach mobs gives you lightning damage on Esh's Mirror, which will make your shield charge better. That single target, it'll make your Vortex better. That single target, uh, and it'll make your Heralds a lot better. So uh, the Vault Breach helps that way. Also, I have an Inspire Learning right here, and I also have a Headhunter. Before I had a Headhunter, the Inspire Learning was giving me some decent buffs from stealing all of the... Um, all of the rare mobs that spawn in from the breach, you kill them, you get a little bit of extra damages, right? That was really nice. Uh, so that's another reason that this is so good. Also, you'll never run out of Herald of Thunder procs uh, with Vol Breach because it's a six second rolling buff on Herald of Thunder. Vol Breach keeps it up, it keeps your Herald of, of Ice um, going as well. So it's really expensive uh, uh, gem. I, this is why I can't recommend the build. It's too expensive for what it does, and for what it does, it's not even um, that great. This is a standard uh, shield charge setup. I changed one thing. Cooling Strike 20, level 1, 23% has been swapped with Onslaught so that I don't have to use a Silver Flask. And I usually have Onslaught up all the time because of Shield Charge Esh's Mirror. So Onslaught here, and I only lose um, like 6%, a little over 6% attack speed, right? Uh, from going Onslaught, and I save a Flask. Really nice. Faster attack, standard, uh, Fortify. This helps with Reflect as well. Uh, what are the other links? Oh, Cospreys. I'm using Vortex, Concentrated Effect, and Control Destruction. You can change this for Control Destruction versus Cold Pen is, you can argue it either way depending on how much uh, resist that your your monster has, right? But I, I tested both out for a while. They, they don't feel any different because you're always chilling anyways, so um, do what you will with that. In here, Lightning Golem. Uh, is pretty good. You want that attack speed for map clearing once again, and the Vol Haste once again for speed and increased duration for uh, Vol Haste. I don't think that needs any explanation. This is a very powerful Vol Gem. Uh, only thing that sucks is when you have a Vol Breach that takes so many souls, it eats up souls from Vol Haste at the beginning, right? So this will be delayed a little bit on your first entry into the map. Um, also, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, Helm. Okay, so Helm, once again, Hail the Thunder, increased crit strikes, uh, added cold damage, increased area of effect. Increased crit strikes, once again, mandatory. You cannot swap these two gems, right? These two are completely, uh, completely swappable. I don't even know if this is right. I've done a lot of testing, and I've been swapping in and out. I think I want Ink AoE because, um, once again, the range finding and having a chain out further is really good. But this... You can put in anything for this, I think. Added lightning, added cold, lightning pen, uh, increased crit damages. Um, I don't know, maybe even an empower. I'm not actually sure. So this last gem is completely up to you. Okay, no, that's. Uh, let's talk about what to put in the six link. Okay, the reason I started with a Herald of Thunder in here until like the level 90 or something, and then I swapped over and it's felt a lot better because you don't need any damage to shatter white mobs. Blue mobs are pretty easy as well. So once you have enough damage there, the real power of the build is Herald of Ice. Those chains are the, the true map clear. This is every quarter second that it's hitting. This is like instant chain across the map. So you want that to... Um, chain as far as possible and as powerfully as possible and on the map on the bosses from what i just talked about with vault breach you really need your herald device to be doing some uh to do in, to do some what's it called to do some damages so that's why i have it there switch it out you might like um you might like herald of thunder better other than that what else is there to talk about uh jewels i want to attack speed jewels with damages but you can go full damage jewels if you feel like you need it uh leveling i just took all the life uh, level does Abaraz Hooves, take the life where you can, and then go damages. Don't um, don't go damages first, you're going to feel bad. Just, yeah, life first, then damages. Lots of jewel slots, so you can customize this uh, a lot later as well. What else is there to talk about? Mm, you die a lot with this build. It's softcore viable. It's not hardcore viable at all. I would not do this uh, in any way. And... 
I guess we could talk a little more about the bad stuff about the build. The bad stuff about the build is like the Vault Breach is expensive. Some of the other gear is really expensive. You don't need a Headhunter, but it's just... Overall, it's not that great, okay? It is fun when it works. Uh, what else is there? Oh, Assassin Nerves hurts it. It doesn't get going until 7 power charges. And... Is that about it, guys? Anything else? Oh, Breach Placement. So... Also another thing, this is like kind of clunky to use, right? You put a Vault Breach and you have to put it so that the expanding circle, the slow part, hits the boss or hopefully they run into it. Otherwise, you don't want to put this on top of the boss or else the Heralds are going to do no damage. If you don't have a 20% Vault Breach, you're going to get stunned out of that cast. It's 2.5 seconds. Uh, so that's kind of weird. And is that about it? Yeah. I guess we can talk about the, the small stuff, the, the intangibles. Gore Herald adds a whole lot of visual AoE. The build feels a lot better to play with Gore Herald. I also just trying to get this if you can. And um, yeah, another little cool thing. Oh, I'll show you this, watch. Look, I have no mana, right? But I can still reserve my Herald, you see that? I didn't need the mana for it. I think that's a side effect of the chest. I don't know if it's a bug or not, but that's kind of cool. All right, that's it. That's the build so far. I hope you guys enjoy it. Once again, I don't recommend, but had to make a YouTube video, right? I'll highlight this. I'll send it to uh, to YouTubes, and I guess that's it. That's the build. Thanks. Thanks for watching.